Hey, today on This Week in Web Design, we're gonna drop in on a designer, a developer, and even a project manager. Watch us work. Welcome to episode 43. I am your host, Jose Cavalier. I am CEO and Chief Educator of Digital Agency, The Group. We have a really special episode today and I wanna get right into it, but before we do, I wanna say thank you to HAL Magazine. It's amazing to be at the first interactive conference. Amazing people, the speakers, the people that I met. It was just a lots of love and a lots of great fun. Uh, I'm looking forward to being part of it next year. If I, get if I get invited back, I'm being presumptuous, but hopefully I will. Um, so straight to it today, uh, in addition to uh, the show, if you're a producer in our producers program, we really urge you to ask questions in the back channel and also to ask questions right here on YouTube if you're not a, a member of the producers program. I had a chance to meet with Cheryl Anderson, who's one of our two executive producers at the conference, and we did a private and personal uh, session talking about her career and where she wanted to go, and I shared with her my experiences of how I got. Not, not only was it amazing, I'm getting choked up, it was so amazing. Uh, we had so much in common, it wasn't even funny, so it's really great to meet people in person. And if you're not a member of the Producers Program, go to This Week in Web Design, and I urge you to, again, the more contact we have, the more I can help you wherever you're heading in your career. So with that said, I'm gonna turn around here, and I'm going to see how the team is doing. How's the team going? What are we doing behind the scenes back here? Should I take it? No, keep on going, just get started. So last episode, we finished planning. So what we had was, <clears throat> excuse me, a promise and, and stretch for the six days. And what we did was, uh, of the, the cards over here. Yeah, the other cards. What we did is we took about so half the this. days and we created a promise. <clears throat> what does a promise mean? What is that? Is that like? A <clears throat> it means um, come hell or high water, the team is going to finish what's in the promise by six days. So usually that's meant so that a, uh, a client like Brian has some sort of level of comfort that no matter what, he's at least gonna get this, but our intention, this being the promise, but our intention is to exceed the promise and go into the stretch. So the way it's a way to set expectations low and get it done. Yeah, a, a minimum. A minimum yeah. expectation. So, right. so, so it's a way to protect yourself and also to set, so the client's not disappointed. Right. Got it. Now here's the thing, uh, today is day one, it's day one of six. So the easiest way to schedule um, everything that needs to be done is just to divide it by six, right? We have six days, and so we're gonna take one sixth of what we have of the expected scope, which is promise and stretch. It's a fake plan, it just looks good. Keep on going with it. Yeah, I like it. So, um, so what, one thing, and like an iron chef, they go, uh, so can you explain to people just a really, uh, they were curious, there was comments on, um, on Facebook and, and on YouTube actually about uh, uh, whether or not we should actually be talking about functionality and planning. There was somebody who was an orthodox scrum person who made the comment, hey, you guys shouldn't be talking about the functionality during the sprint planning, which we were doing last week in the last week's episode. Okay. Uh, there's orthodoxy. <clears throat> what is the rule that you mentioned uh, uh, that things fit into whatever you make it? There's a paradox. Uh, Parkinson's law. Yeah, what is that? Work expands to fill the available time. Well, that's the corollary to time boxing. That's why you do time boxing. Because if you don't, then people are just going to fill up their time doing extra work and more design tweaks or more functionality tweaks or considering other options or whatever it is. Awesome. Um, so the way we uh, use that uh, to get our work done is we time box not only the sprint but we've split uh, the sprint in half by saying uh, for the first three days we're going to do our promise and the second three days we're going to do our stretch and now we're going to refine it even more and we're going to break it down and say well, one sixth the whole thing we have to get done today so that's what we're going to do uh, and i think ari um, and jacob we're going to do i think the show page right correct okay so if you guys remember from the planning, the show page was actually Ryan's third priority, but the team has come up and said, yes, we understand it's the third priority, but based on feasibility, we're going to do this first. And, and that's up to the team, and th that's going to be fine. And we'll get to our promise no matter what. Right. OK, so the show page. You want to tell us about what's going to be done today in the show page? Is it everything in that column? Yeah, so uh, today in the show page, it's uh, 
first, I mean, first off, I got to install Drupal, get it going, uh, just get the get it set up, right. go down, download the module that I need to get the show page going, so I can actually embed YouTube videos, um, give somebody the ability to actually create the show page with all the different fields that they need. Um, we also need an actual theme, so it just doesn't look like it's straight out of the box Drupal. Yeah. Right, and that's what I'm doing. I'm so in, in order to start, you're doing what? In order to start quicker? Right, I'm uh, going through several sites that we know that have Drupal themes, and I'm kind of taking something, uh, you know, just looking at what's out there and seeing if it matches roughly what we have in our wires, um, and then get it installed. And you'll start tweaking and installing modules, figuring out the layouts? Yeah, I mean, right now I'm just trying to get the foundation built while you go out and get a nice little PSD, something that, you know, something that I can modify the uh, existing thing. Can you do me a favor? Can you, can you Skype me the websites that you're going downloading to? Because I'm going to capture them on my computer, like with uh, Camtasia. Yeah. And that way I can ha we can have them for the, show, for the episode. Yeah. So what's interesting is in what you just said, you described everything that needs to be done for the show page without looking at all the tasks, right? Yeah, yeah. Because you just, you know essentially what Ryan wants, you know what the goal of the entire sprint is, and you wrote the tasks, but they're kind of irrelevant at, at this point. Yeah, I mean, I know what the tasks are, I know what, what it needs to get done. I mean, I will reference it as I'm building to just go, oh, yeah, I gotta get that done too. It's like, oh, am I done yet? No, because that task still needs to happen. So, I, Jose, I think that's an important distinction there is, Typically, how projects are managed are, are based on tasks, and the project manager will make sure and hand task out the team, yeah. and then ride the team members until each task is done. But we're not doing that because ours is goal based, and really it's their project, so they know what's to be done. And if I went in and managed this task, I'd just be getting in the way. Got it. So set it and forget it, like Ron Popeil. Yep. Once they set it, and that's hard, I think, for project managers to get uh, used to. Um, and I, and I, since I'm now beginning to impose uh, orthodox scrum on all our projects here at the group, uh, getting project managers to know that, hey, you don't have to be on top of everyone all the time. They're doing it themselves, and then on the daily call, you know whether they're on track or not. Okay. So without any further yapping, I say we just let you guys get to work. So we should expect to see the show page by the end of this work session? Well, at least the foundation of the show page. Uh Probably not all pretty up yet because you're going to definitely see the themes start coming together. So you can see like a static version of how stuff's going to look, and then the foundation and then as we go forward, you'll start seeing the merging of what uh, Ari's doing and what I'm doing. So. Okay. So just for the, the viewers, and well, I guess for me, then our expectation is if we don't get the show page completely done by this session, we'll have to have, uh, have shows and the show page completed by the end of the next session, right? Just, um, just to be kind of on track. Right, definitely. And it's, uh, you know, once the, the theme's built, like this, I'm going to have to just, because of the way Drupal is, I'm going to have to divert a little bit to just try and get the overall right. theme put into right. there. Um, but at the, the actual show page, you'll start seeing fall together to be a completed version over like the next. Gotcha. So for, for those people who are orthodox uh, Scrum or Agile people, um, what really is happening here is the infrastructure and architecture is being done up front. So the visual tangible progress is actually a little slower because, uh, because we have to do that infrastructure and set up first. And then as we get to the second and third sessions, you'll st start to see the features and functionality uh, increase at the, well, the rate at which those are done increase. We we had that with a project where the you, you were able to be ahead. You know your team, which is developing a very cool site, uh, with us, uh, got ahead uh, on the dev side um, where we weren't done with the with the templates, and it was custom theming, meaning that it wasn't based on an existing theme. Right. So the other thing that we did in order to do this, and I want to show the the, the the viewers, you know, what the resources are, so that they can go and themselves really um, uh, do this themselves, meaning go out and, and get the themes. What websites are you using to look at themes 
and to download themes? Um, the regular Drupal.org site has uh, quite a bit of themes. Uh, we use Theme Forest. We also use um, Theme Shark. Theme by so like Theme Forest by by yeah. Bado, which like, is uh, we're going to Google and just type in premium Drupal themes. And you found one. Yeah. On what site did you find it? Um, it's called Delicious. That's what the, the the website that you found it on. Well, I'm cool. gonna send you the link to the actual thing. Cool. Appreciate that. And we're using iChat internally. Uh, we're using uh, uh, Bonjour, which we use often to communicate. We also use Skype to talk with you. Yes. Um, and I love, and this is not a plug because GoToMeeting is not sponsoring this week in web design. Um, they, they, without GoToMeeting right now, I would be lost. We use it every day. Without GoToMeeting every day, uh, we would be lost. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. All right, so ooh, is that the theme we're using now? It's a nice site. I, I like the fact that they're using Lorem Ipsum. Oh wait, is that the site? The, is, that, yeah. is that the theme we're going to use? That's the actual theme. That's nice. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. super nice. Yeah, really nice. Uh, yeah, just by surfing around, trying to find Drupal 7 themes. You know, we're yeah. using Drupal 7. There's a lot more Drupal 6 themes than there are Drupal 7 themes. Drupal 7 is relatively new. But we need so, it. But yeah, yeah it's you know, future-proofing. Basically. Somebody poo pooed the fact that we're using Drupal on YouTube. They're like, ugh, ugh, Drupal. And, and I wanted to get your opinion on that. My opinion is that um, publishing platforms, and we've been working on many, 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 many Drupal sites since you know, the last uh, three years or four years, it, it's really relatively uh, uh, efficient and much more inexpensive to just kind of jump on and, and um, um, and, and, and have all these features out of the box as core modules. What are your thoughts when people like poo-poo uh, Drupal? Um, I don't really get all that offended. I'm not a, Drupal's a great tool and it's really, I mean, it's really powerful. It's, it's one of those things where I found that Drupal is always there for me. It's like, you know, it's like the hammer and the CMS. I can just, you know, pick it up and get the nail in and get it going. Um, there's a lot of other great uh, CMSs out there, WordPress, which is really good, you know, for a, a nice blog. And you can do a lot of stuff with it. It's definitely coming along. Um, there's, you know, Joomla, just reading uh, Mod X. I don't know much about it, but it's, it was mentioned in the newsletter I had. So, I mean, there's plenty of them out there, but I just choose Drupal because there's a huge, uh, huge community yeah. for it, a huge community. Uh, a lot of forums, a lot of people talking, and so it's easy. If I get stuck, it's easy for me to get a solution. Um, hey, as the uh, Scrum Master, yeah. I'd like to remove all inferences from my team getting work done. All right, I'll, I'll, step, I'll, I'll step away. I'll step away. Right. Thank you. <laughs> but by the way, you're the Scrum Master, but I'm the host. So who has a, no, you have authority. I give you full authority. It's just a no, no, no. Keep fight, 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 fight. No, go ahead, go ahead. You're right. So I'm actually going to focus on the computer here. All right. So what I'm going to do right now is, that, you know, based on the theme that we picked, I'm going to screen shoot it, um, and I'm going to drop it into Photoshop. And for example, you know, drop in our logo and start to work out a little bit of the show page structure that we have going on here so that then Jacob can modify the theme based on what we need. Right. Definitely. And, uh, and you want to b-roll this? And we can explain uh, a little bit about uh, how to carry the planning through to the execution. Go for it. Should we grab this? Uh, yeah, you can, you can, you can okay, just so put it so on Just regular text on page. Yeah. Right here, sidebar. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, the, the, the sidebar there, because it is. All right. So you want to see how to not only set uh, an overall goal, but make sure that you reach your goal. You do something like this. There. So now you have tangible goals set out in very discrete chunks, right? So day one, we're doing show page. Day two, shows. Day three, homepage, et cetera. And this is how we avoid doing status reports, right? Because why do I need to write a status report? I just got to see whether on day one we finish a show page. And if we don't, that's a red flag. Then I know on day two, if we don't uh, finish the show page and shows, now we got a problem. And if we miss our day three mark, well, now we're pretty sure the project's uh, off, off track. So 
That all happens without a status report because these days are going to come quickly. Even in a regular project, I would break it down to, I typically do Monday and Thursday deployments. So I know that uh, within every three days, two and a half to three days, I have functionality that has to be completed, and those are my red flags, or that's how I check status. Um, that's all done without reporting. It's very tangible, and at the end of each uh, deployment day, I see working code and working designs. Um, awesome. This is also how uh, to actually know whether the, an entire project will make it. Because if you break it down granularly like this in a sprint, then you also have this evidence for sprints themselves, and that sprint will make up, uh, those number of sprints will make up a project, and then you'll know if your project is on track. Um, what are you holding there in your hand? Uh, yeah, just some notes. Um, it's also uh, how to put your project on autopilot. Like typically project managers get in the way. They actually uh, decrease the team member's productivity thinking that they're helping. But if you set this up, all you got to do is step back and watch and see if they deliver. And it's also, uh, as, uh, uh, as a corollary to that, it's also how you empower team members because you're just stepping out of the way and saying, hey, this is what, what we agreed to. Let's see if we make it. That's awesome. I've been having a lot of great luck, and I'm a super flaky creative, and I, even I can manage a project team in Scrum. You know what I mean? Yeah, which isn't to say that it's easy. It's no, taken quite a few years. It's right? taken a few years to understand it and to know it, but um, you know, I'm very grateful. It's pretty awesome. Yeah. And who are you, and what are you doing on this project, other than licking yourself? It's like, well, you know, just hanging out here. Got it. So, where, where are you at, um, Jacob? Right now, I've, uh, I've already got Google installed, uh, and a few modules that I know we're going to need. Uh, Give me an example. It was like uh, Views, which is a query builder for Drupal that allows me to build out a list page of all the shows. Um, and uh, Media, which for Drupal 7 will handle the YouTube embedding uh, process, so that way you can upload to YouTube and then take the embed code. Where do you get, the, so, where do you get these? Um, I'm getting them all at the Drupal.org site right now. Um, and you see, you know, my screen, I've been uh, you know, just going through the Drupal.org site, searching for the module, downloading the module, untarring it. And so basically, let me see, you, which one is the media module? You just search for that? Yeah, I just went Drupal.org and looked up media module. And uh, bam, and there it is. Yeah, um, normally I would, use, uh, I would use Drush, which is Drupal shell, which is a command line. Yeah, and it'll be straight into what with that? Um, I could just I could hook straight into uh, into the Drupal.org uh, into the repository oh, really? and just wow and just bring it right give me this that this that this that or I can you know, build recipes for a basic Drupal site and just hit go give you that whole recipe and then it's all there. Um, That's awesome. Yeah, and the, and the Drupal does, site's actually great. Yeah, it, it does take a you know some knowledge of a command line interface, so, which is why you know, I use it. But, it's but if you don't have command, command line interface, you can do it. exactly what we're doing right now is still pretty easy to go There's 9,189 um, uh, modules yeah, yeah, of all types. What type of modules do you, they usually have? Um, I mean, they usually have modules for just about you know everything you're looking for. Um, with uh, and how do you install it once I download it? Like, let's say I'm 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 a creative. I'm super, yeah. uh, or like out there, you know, we have great great designers who are starting to try to do Drupal. Sure. How would they download it and and, and do it? And, so, and it? Um, like I'm gonna do it right now. Right. So on my uh, on my Mac here, I'm using uh, MAMP, which basically gives you, uh, you know, Microsoft Apache, MySQL, PHP. What you're gonna need is the uh, a LAMP stack, 
which you call, which is usually Linux, Apache, MySQL, PHP. So those are the, basically the server, you're going to have a Linux server. Yeah, well, I mean, MySQL. right now, I, I, you also have a, a Windows, so it's not necessarily need Linux, but you need the Apache, MySQL, and PHP. That's all you need to use. Yeah, those one. are the three, and have them set up and configured. So Media um, Temple, exactly. Rackspace, which we use, all of those guys are ready to go for Drupal. Um, to the most part, they have, they have the most Linux part, you can go, you know, yeah. fire one off really quick and then start figuring it. There's a lot of tutorials on, you know, how to build a, how to build a LAMP server that are very detailed. And it's, I mean, that's the Google, how to build a LAMP server. And it's all like settings and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, that you can either set like, manually or you can do this, do that, do that. Like I've had to do it, right? right. Like for the back end, I yeah. have to sit and make sure that all the settings are right uh, to install Drupal on our servers. You know what? And, and uh, if you walk me through it or a developer walks me through it, I can do it. It's it's not you know you have to pay attention, and right. it's not like whoa. It's it's, uh, it's not as scary and complex as people as think. It, is it? I mean, you know, five years ago, yeah, probably because you know there wasn't such great tools out there. Uh, but now it's but now it is it's quite easy to get in there and just Straight. run off a couple commands and it's there. So yeah, I took the uh, you know, I downloaded Drupal, put it into uh, uh, put it into my uh, Apache configuration so that way, you know, my web server I guess you can call it in, in the folder so I that way it'll come. Yeah. yeah, so, so that you have way, it local. Yeah, right now it's locally and you can see it from within this office. But Got it. Outside this office, it's not. So you're developing it. Awesome. Yeah. Well, I'll let you continue working. Yeah. Ari, uh, where are you at? Did you mind showing some chart? Uh, yeah, phone? so on my screen I have, uh, you know, just bits and pieces of screenshots that I took. So I took a screenshot of the footer of the theme, and I just have that I can... I can you raise the screenshot. Yeah. Um, I took a screenshot of one of our videos. Um, you know, just to start to flesh out the page. You that's see, weird. That's so meta. Like, we're in the video doing the same thing we're doing right now. Yeah. That's cool. And, uh, you know, still haven't dropped in the logo. I'm going to do that, you know, fix the nav. But I'm basically just kind of turning what's back here into something that kind of matches the theme we already have. Jacob and I already identified one of the pages in the theme that follows the structure. So we're going to use that. Um, and yeah, and I'm just going to take this PSD to a point where it reflects what's over here on the wireframe and it has all our branding components and then I'm just going to shoot that over to Jacob. To, to use it as theme, skin the theme or to skin the theme based stuff. on that, yeah. And then to know like which bits of content we need, right? We need a video with a description. Um, and there's changes that we could probably make into, into the whole thing while we're here. Like we can sketch out some additional features and things. And the one thing I'm interested in is really figuring out our the these are stories as it relates to our original um, to our original um, users, meaning the the four main users: the student, the person who's a freelancer, and the person who is a uh, professional that's changing careers. You know, those are the ones that we've identified. How do these things relate to all three of those? Um, uh, I, well, I think that watching the show, you can figure out how to kind of potentially do each role by seeing what we're each doing. If uh, something I did this weekend at the How conference is uh, I did the Fido assessment, the flaky, evil, dorky, obnoxious, and people were figuring out where they fit into it, and it was really awesome. It's something that we should do for the show, which we've talked about using the Fido as a framework for what content we're going to serve to people, so it's pretty cool. All right, uh, I'll let them continue working. How are you doing? You're just sitting back and chilling, man. I'm staying out. This girl right? thing is too easy. <laughs> uh, Henry, what do you think? What's hey, going we can on? ask the team members if they'd like me to interfere or look over their shoulders or ask for status updates. Would you guys like uh, Tony to sit over your shoulder like this and just like, oh, hey, how's it going? Hey. hey, can you give us status? Hey, are you, hey, making are you ready yet? Are you, are you ready yet? Are you done yet? Are you done yet? Are you done yet? Would that be helpful? Not really. No. <laughs> In that case, I'm just going to say. So the, the, the thing I want to share and, and just kind of say thank you to you. And I, I continue to say thank you. It's my gratitude, uh, uh, attitude of gratitude uh, for for a lot of what you know Scrum has taught me. Uh, uh, producer Ryan walked in, and you know for those of you breaking the fourth wall, producer Ryan is in the room uh, directing the show. Uh, walked in on me here with my assistant doing um, actually the day in Scrum. Oh yeah. I was actually doing all my kind of tasks that I needed to do for the day on, on index cards, and I carry index cards with me now everywhere I go. 
So I'm kind of like Rain Man of Scrum. I'm pulling out cards, so I'm starting to plan with people that are going to be like, uh, yeah, dude, what's going on there? But I have completely foregone, foregone, is that a word? I'm not using a uh, little notebook anymore, other, other than for sketching, not to really sketching drawings and having fun. Because I never look back at the damn notebook. Yeah. I put notes in it. It's just back. too much. Even a notebook is too much. It's too much. And then, you know, ADD, the, like I said at the HOP conference this weekend, the force of ADD is strong with me. Um, like, review design, I'm done with it. What's the easiest check that I can do? Like, look, check, it's done. Yeah. I'm dropping it on the floor, it's a little bit extreme. It's kind of comedian, it's dropping the mic. But you know what's interesting, doing that, because we have so many ways to get distracted, that when you have review design, you inevitably, inevitably get distracted, and then when you come back to your desk and you're like, what was I doing? You have this one note card that says, oh, oh it's right yeah. there, yeah. And so what I usually do is that if I, if I walk away from my desk, I put the card right on top, like that, yeah. so that when I come back, I know where it is. And actually, Chrometa, which I'm beginning to use for my timekeeping, I come back, and it's asking me, like, where am I? Where was I doing? And I'm like, whoa, hey, you're being invasive of my privacy. But I put what I was doing, and usually I get up to go do a review, or I get up to do something, you know, somebody asks me for something. And when I come back, I can actually put what I did and go back to Chrometa and classify all my activities all day. I no longer lose my time to the camera. I no longer lose track of what I'm doing in an entire day. Crazy. I've well, never, awesome. I've never been able to do that, and it's kind of intrusive at first, but it's totally. I mean, I just feel it's great because uh, you know maybe some people feel a little bit like turned off by the fact that it tracks everything that you do. For me personally, I've noticed that there's so much time that I spend in communications or whatever else that I don't account for. That I'm just like, wow, you know, like I spent like two hours in freaking email today, like just back and forth with developer, or producer, or whoever. Like I would never personally like for me. The time that I charge for is the time I spend in Photoshop. No. Oh, right. Every single minute of your time that you're working for a client should be billed. Totally. But yeah. I, I have no idea like how to track that, you know, and, and this app is just fantastic. It's got like a daily kind of it's fantastic. It's you know, insane. Like, it actually tracks what bra what sites you were browsing. What sites you were browsing. Which is kinda of scary. Yeah, yeah, you know, you gotta yeah. keep it Which could be trouble for you. No, <laughs> I, I keep it clean all day at work. Um, but um, but if you categorize you have, like, like the time, you know, you can make sure like the time I'm organizing it. I'm starting exactly. to set it up so that I got all my stuff that's well organized and time stamp. Right. And it's working out pretty well. Really the videos cool. are great. It explains it. Like my biggest concern was that I wouldn't be able to understand it. And you know what? Um, I'm pretty freaking impressed that I can understand it. Ari says, I'm loving it. I'm loving it. When you don't accurately keep track of your time, you end up not billing clients for all the time you put in and lose money in the process. Timesheets and stopwatches can help, but before you know it, you forget to fill out your timesheets or enter your hours into the computer. That's where Chrometa can make the difference, automatically capturing every second of your billable time with no effort or data entry on your part. The magic of Chrometa is that it runs in the background, quietly making note of your activities. It's like having your very own personal timekeeper. When you open or compose an email, Chrometa will capture that activity. Same for documents you draft, web research you do, or even phone and meeting time. Everything is captured passively without you lifting a finger. Result? You can increase your monthly billings up to 20% or more while actually working fewer hours. Take a closer look at Chrometa and gain control of all your billable time today. So we're midway through the one hour sprint. Uh, to do the TWI website, the This Weekend website. Let's check in and see how they're doing. All right, guys. How are you guys doing? Everything coming along? Good, good. Ari, where are you at? Um, I've got my PSD and I'm almost done with it. What does that mean? Um, I will have all the elements dropped in that we need based on our wireframes, and then I'll shoot it over to Jacob. What logo are you using? Um, um, from? This is still the screenshot, so I need to... Uh, but you put the grid on it. What was the was the template that it have a sort of grid? Was it? Yeah, already? it's following like the standard grid. It's following a nine sixty. Yeah. Cool. That's awesome that that grid became so standard. Yeah. Awesome. All right, Jacob, where are you at? You know, I've got the uh, the base Google installed. I've got the ability to uh, to embed the YouTube video. It's not showing up yet. That's basically what I'm in the process of getting actual embed. Awesome. Instead of just blank, so. so basically in the sprint, the next thing you're going to get is his PSD. Can we get some scratch content? Can maybe we, let's write some of the, so there's content here, that's, those are the episode titles. 
So Ari, do you want me to iChat you like episode descriptions? Yeah, that'd be great. So what I'll do is I'll go to the existing, um, Henry, are you trying to take off? It's like, all right, Henry, now you're going to host a show. Just, you know, all right, there you go. Now you're trying to figure out where to go. All right, get out of here. All right, that's Henry the Office Dog, ladies and gentlemen. All right, so I'm going to send you the content existing YouTube descriptions via yeah, iChat. So you can drop those in, Ari. Yep. Content fidelity is pretty important and it's something that I think for clients it really makes them see the, uh, they like it when they see the content uh, ready. So this weekend, Muppet movie's coming out soon. Very exciting. Just random thought of the day. Grew up with the Muppets. In Espanol. In Espanol. Descriptions on in the current site, the descriptions aren't very. Um, we we don't surface them. There's only uh, thumbnails. Where now on the new site, and I'm gonna capture what I'm doing here on screen so that we can actually see it um, at some scale uh, and record. So what I'm doing is I am trying to find. All the, wow, there is a lot of comments on that last episode. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's really great. Um, so web design this weekend. So we're gonna use last week's episode kind of as a, as a I guess as a, you go already. So this is the title for last week's episode. There you go. And then we're going to uh, the description, trick rate for the episode. And are we going to use a full length of the description or are we going to truncate them? What do you think, Ari? In terms of content? Truncate. They're pretty long. What is it? It's show more than yeah. your What are you making there? A little search icon for the it's just a place where I don't know if I can actually do that. You probably can. Yeah. Well, you just use a circle and then you use a. The STEM and Illustrator. Yeah. You know what? I was really surprised at how at the interactive conference, a lot of people that I talked to, or, or or even just people that are yeah, people our our viewers that are getting into web design. They they always design in Photoshop, and they're like, ooh, Illustrator. I didn't think about it. I should learn it. They're not really used to working in Vector. Illustrator is not that weird. It's so much easier. And what are the differences? Like, what do you use Illustrator for versus you know Photoshop? A lot of people ask me that. I'd say like Illustrator is mostly for shapes. Um, and also, like when you need to iterate really fast, Illustrator is great. Like for um, you know, if you just want to yeah, yeah, move things around, and then you're like, this is good. Put it in Photoshop. Would you say that? Would you say that Illustrator for you? Which one do you have a better command of? Like, which one do you know better? Um, I'd say it depends on the type of task. Obviously, if it's laying out pages, um, I'm more comfortable doing it in Photoshop. Um, but like anything that's like iconography or you know, logos has got to be the typography, even when you do like color palette explorations, like all that kind of like more freestyle stuff is um, Illustrator's better for sure. You know, something that the Google, the YouTube channel has that I really like is that on the right it has um, the, um, hey Henry, don't mess up the scrum cards, dude. He, he won't touch them, he'll be okay. Uh, that on the right you have. Uh, uh, the, the the producers, the genre, that's obviously part of the YouTube UI. What do you think of putting, you know, the cast and crew, like, you know, cast was like Cavalier, directors, Ian, Ian, Kick and Brenda, I, or producers, you don't like that? I, I think it's more important to have their, the important people's Twitter handles. Okay, so like the, the Twitter channel. handles right on the right. As, as just like a formatting thing, like always being able to see the host and then seeing the important people, like most important guests. Anything that you want to contact, the cast or crew is nowhere near as important. Okay, that's fair enough. Wow, I'm liking the, the little nap. Look at how cool the little, uh, the, how, how great the, wow, Ari is so fast, it's just like blazing hip hop and R&B. Um, I can't even 
catch up. All right, so I'm trying to give you some. Just, just so those are episodes below. Why do why do have comments? Why do we have episodes? Comments is good. Is this is this the episode episode? This is the actual show page. So yeah, this is where you would watch the. Uh... So let, let's go back to the scenarios of what people. And this is a discussion, real quick. The scenarios that we have, again, the different users and what they need. So I do this, and it's something that I really have to make sure that I'm doing. Um, and I'm going to record it here on my on my um, on my on my computer. Is that I have to look at the. Um, so I'm looking at the site. I'm looking for the site um, this week in and the episode itself. So I'm going to go to the redesign. And then I'm going to go to the inception phase, which is the beginning, the client kit, which has all of the stuff that we captured. When people, when I myself ask myself, what should I do in a particular um, in a particular scenario, I actually go back to this document and try to triangulate the decision based on that. So right now I'm going back and saying, okay, what would our users want for here? Would they want con episodes or would they want comments to be first? So. Here, here are the priorities from the business point of view. Um, for increased revenue, producers program, sponsorship, and templates. That means that we should have somewhere download the templates for this show because people ask me and I'm getting tired mm -hmm. of having to provide either templates or resources. I would call it resources, Ari. Mm -hmm. Like immediately to the right, there's like resources. And in Drupal, we can do that, right? We can just upload something, people can download it. Yeah. Just have like a little you know, upload thing. So resources, oh man, are they so popular, the templates? People at the How Conference love the fact that I, they tweeted me immediately. Hey, can we get that PowerPoint that you just showed? Um, they love tangible things. So the, the sponsorship is the next thing. And what I would prefer, I would like to position, similar to how we're integrating Prometa, and this is something for you guys that are working on startups or you're working with clients that are developing products. Um, look, the best way that you can figure out what the, what the product needs to be, you be a user, become a user, do it. You know, I was just traveling recently, and I and I and I was recording. Um, um, I was recording um, uh, video footage and images, etc., for a particular project that we're working on, trying to see what the user would go through in order to do that. So, uh, sponsorship. How do we integrate Prometa? I think was the point that I was trying to make uh, in a way that really makes sense. You know what I mean, Ari? Like maybe it's a little YouTube video of how you use Prometa. Um, I think that would be awesome. Like instead of having like a little ad tout, mm -hmm. no, screw the ad tout. Let's do a little video. Sponsor resources, mm -hmm. like something like that. I don't want it to be, and I'm saying I, because I'm speaking on behalf of what I would want to do on behalf of our users. Does that make sense, Ari? Mm -hmm. I'm not being selfish or egotistical. I would want, if as a user, I would just want to see how to use this product that you guys are talking about all excitedly during the show. So integration of the sponsor into doing it. That doesn't sound right. <laughs> integration of the sponsor into that doing of the show. So if we're watching us watch us work, which is what we're saying in our show, also here's the sponsor resources and it's a little YouTube video about Chrometa. They have them on Vimeo, I think, but just make a video window there. So that that I made those decisions based on pulling up the client workbook and uh, <laughs> Hey, 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 Do dogs, 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 dog drama. I think somebody's in there. Go ahead and let him out. Okay, that is the FedEx delivery person. Okie dokie, moving on after the dogs. So, increase efficiency and reduce cost. So, show templates, easy, commu easy community to make it efficiency. Messaging from the show. Ryan likes to say stuff. Um, wayfinding, easy related content. That's the other thing, like other shows that might relate to. Mm -hmm. um, and again, we're changing functionality mid sprint, and you can pipe up and say, Whoa, we were planning on doing that. That's not what's in the stories in the cards. I'm actually fucking it up. Wait a minute. I wasn't paying attention. Ah, <laughs> you see? Sorry, I was working. I just changed functionality a little bit. Like, I added a little video embed, I added a few little things that are here and there, I just want you to see what I'm doing. What I'm doing, Jacob, is I was looking at the, uh, at the uh, requirements of processor and discovery, mm -hmm. and I wanted to confirm that we were meeting the priorities. So two of the priorities, one was sponsorship, one was a producer's program, and I already did links for resources, like for example, downloadable PDFs and stuff. Sponsorship resources, which is a little embedded video right there. 
from YouTube for a particular sponsor. So play in that little box? Or yeah, it would just be, it would, no, it would just be a little embedded thing that would play in that little box and somebody wants to look at it, they go there. It's like an ad, think of it yeah. as an ad. And uh, is that specific to? We need all the social yeah. buttons, sorry. Like somewhere like at the top or mm -hmm. easily. Like all of them, the ones that we have already. That's specific to the show, yes, just for our show. Right. So our show has, so in, a, in the back end, it needs to have a, you know, add that resources thing. And again, since I'm adding this now, it might affect the taking advantage of our Scrum Master not being here. I know. Um, no, no. I, I'm just just making sure that, and that's Scrum is adaptable. I'm making sure that we're meeting the needs. So real quick, on increased awareness, short promos, heroes, anchor tenants. We, we're doing that already by having the, 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 having the host up at the top. Um, Facebook, we talked about having integration in increased awareness. Right. Why don't we just integrate Facebook comments like the launch.is? You know, Jason's really into it. He's the CEO of the network. I am totally into the idea that we just have our Facebook, you know, kind of forget about discuss because I have to update people on discuss. Then I have to go update people on Facebook mm -hmm. and then on Google Plus and then, you know what, on Twitter. Just put it in the freaking Facebook. Is that easy? That's easier. Yeah, we did it. It's just stick Facebook comments in there. Yeah. Great. Facebook comments. Bam. That happens. Done. Let me actually give Ari a screenshot of our Facebook comments. Even though I think. Oh, you know what? Launch. Out. I'm gonna do it from launch. Launch. I'm gonna screenshot launch. Is. The boom. Bow. I'm actually. I, I ended my my speech my my talk at how interactive with again the article that Jason wrote about the uh, Occupy Wall Street. It was awesome. Very inspiring. It was a call to arms for creatives. Go out there and do the next Airbnb. Creative culture, startup culture is not very common in creative, uh, well, in the audience, the print audience and the traditional design audience, startup culture has not been as prevalent as in like the tech culture that we come from. Uh, in LA even, you know, it's very much hot in LA. You go to the west side and they call it, um, um, Santa, uh, what do they call Santa Monica? They call it a Silicon Beach. Um, and uh, working over at Blank Spaces, I ran into, you know, guys from all types of startups. I'm working on this, I'm working on that. It's a pretty, pretty, uh, people don't know that about LA. LA is very, um, very uh, startup friendly. And I think creatives should know more. I want to see creatives doing this around the table, you know, doing startups, it's the next startup. Whether it's Drupal, whether it's, you know, whatever. It's all about content and about value. Can I uh, play the role of uh, client, client for, for a second? Yes you, can. Um, yes, you can. I like all of this, it looks cool, but one of the things we talked about last episode was um, integrating a per show blog into the, the show page. We didn't talk about that. So that, that's definitely something that I would want to see integrated just as a, both for a host capability and as a producer capability. So could it be on the right side, like it's a, it's like a little blog yeah. module? It would be. Or do you want it in the center below the comments? Yeah, you know, if you look at the way this weekend web design is set up right now, .com, it's, it, the show. Like a it's like tabs. Yeah. So we would have to set tabs up off the top. Well, I, I kind of want to integrate it in the same page because right now the way it would work would be there would be a show and then a blog post that's completely unrelated or related and then a show and then a blog post. So real quick before we fail our sprint. So um, maybe before we well go go back to the screen, all right? What I was thinking is I couldn't find one. Just take that first one, click on it, and then go. No, click on it. You have to read more and see if it's down there. But what I, what I'm thinking based on, on Ryan's client com just yeah, there's not a lot. Let me see. You know which one has a lot of uh, comments? The Occupy Wall Street one. Yeah. Um, has a bazillion comments. I'm gonna look for that. Um, Jacob, what I was going to say on that, if you look at this week in web design, mm -hmm. um, the, the site this week in web design, um, which I think, um, Ryan.com, which Ryan built in, um, Squarespace. in Squarespace, um, it has tweets on the left, which I think we should also have on ours. Mm -hmm. It has a Twitter accounts. This is just a straight Twitter kind of uh, embed uh, thing you're doing. It has to become a producer on the top right, which I, I think we should have it. Persistent on every page on this. 
And then it has become a sponsor this weekend, meet the producer's calendar. It has a bunch of features. Mm -hmm. So for now, let's not do all of those. No, let's just do the blog. All the of those were, like, the funny thing is really the blog is it shows and then potential. Yeah. So this module we should include and then just blog. Yeah. And if we run out of time and we can't do it, we can do it. Really, it's really, I, I imagine that the functionality is not. There. It's not in there. The, the, what we have for today, the home, no, no, we're doing the show page. We have user needs to watch video, user needs to share video, user needs to uh, the episode, read the episode description, user needs comments, and user needs Twitter, etc. Slight modification to template, video, themes, yeah. The blog thing wasn't in the sprint. It's okay, we can leave it out for now. Uh, blog is in the next stretch, it's in the stretch. Oh, it's good to have. So right now, it's just the basic video stuff. So what I would do, Ari, is I would position it in there somewhere, uh, Jacob, but we won't, we'll design it a little bit, like to know where it's gonna go, kind of, but we won't implement it. So yeah. And it's at the top of our, in our nav, right? Oh, no, it's not. Right, no, it needs to, we need a sub nav. Actually, here's something that we're missing that I would really like because I'm a designer. I would like a big This Week in Web Design logo on top of, a, of the, uh, like a banner, like a sub banner. Like, just, just for now, Ari, just stick a square, like a rectangle right here. No, let's put it, push like everything down. Like on the sidebar at the top. Yeah, like here, and you put it in here, we do the logo. I like, I like the idea. That's better so that it keeps the video high. It's beautiful all the time. Okay, so fine. So lower all this and me, and then put the logo, the logo of the show right there. Yeah, Ari, you it's just the same width as that block that you already have. Is that what you're thinking? Where it's sitting right on top of like show, host, and his and and logo. Is that column big enough? Um, yeah. Yeah. So. Okay. Why don't you bring it all the way to the fourth? Okay. You see how that has one, two, three, four, and right now you're kind of halfway through the third. Yep. Let's bring it all the way to the. It'll tighten things up a little bit, but it's kind of like how this is. Okay. Oh crap! Hold up. Drop my cards. That's cool. Wow, Ari, your episode uh, doing uh, Sink or Swim is so popular. Most popular episode ever. No, 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 first no. Well, no, but it, it, it's a lot of velocity. 950 compared to the episode before that has 400, so. We talked about doing more of the. We're definitely, yeah. Definitely going to. Alrighty. So, yeah, so we lower the right column and. How are we doing in time? In the time boxing? We have 10 minutes left? Oh, excellent. Okay, we have footage here. So one of the things that I want to point out, and, and Jacob, can you explain to me, because we do a lot of Drupal projects together, you know, there's a, well, where you are right now in terms of uh, installing the base modules, etc. cetera, um, clients sometimes don't see the prog they see the prog they see what's in progress and they feel like, wait, wait, that's not what we said we were gonna build. Because Drupal allows for incremental kind of development and kind of tweaking and fine tuning. What are the biggest challenges in fine tuning and in getting templates to do what what they need to do? Especially if you're working with a designer, what would you tell the designer to be careful to make sure that they don't they don't make your life harder? Um I mean there's a there's a few things like let's see here, what can I take out of this? Nothing, see, he's, he's good. But uh, there's a few things, like just adding little things. Well, for example, like the host name here and then picture and stuff. I haven't really thought about, you know, where I'm getting all that information from. And just plugging things into like your design where it's like, where does that information come from? Because mm. it's... Uh, is it content managed? Is it static? So what's the difference static. between static and content managed? Well, like, you know, there would be like, you know, static dynamic, which... Yeah, or content manage is kind of the same thing. Then yeah. just something that's going to be coming from the database and consistently changing. Like each page, you're going to see a different host name, so it's different now. If it was just one, like it was just this weekend web design, it would be a static piece because it would just show you know your one title host, space right. and your title. So uh, and that's something that that, that people have a chat. Well, it's simple. You know, dynamic means database driven, and that there's a yeah, you can click and update it without writing any HTML. Uh, static means that it's written into the HTML of the template, right. and you can't really change it unless you go into the HTML. 
Um, and uh, that's perfect, Larry. Right, just put it in there. We'll, we'll have, we have to design a nicer top for our show. We've, we've never really taken the time to do it. Uh, what are other things that designers might do? Um, not using a grid system like this. I've seen designers do really yeah, like just low all over the place. Uh, yeah, I mean, the grid system, I believe you guys were saying 960 before, which basically adds very easily divisible numbers so that you can increase the columns to two, to three, to four, and make it very easy so that, uh, so in the uh, CSS and stuff, you can do percentages so it can flex. You can, you know, do a- CSS uh, mean? Uh, cascading style sheet, so just building it out. Like, right now he's building a PSD which basically is a picture, and at this point, if anything really needed to get changed or the, you know, the client sees something that he doesn't like, you know, to change it now is the best time because waiting until later when I've already wrote the HTML and CSS, which basically is chopping this up and making it into a web page, right. that's when, you know, things just get kind of... Uh, I don't, mind, I don't think you need that as a blog icon. Sorry. Right? We'll, we'll eventually have a blog link somewhere up there. We'll figure it out. I, I think, you know what, based on your idea of making it on the left, yeah. on the right, what I think we should do in the next, in the next uh, sprint is that right underneath the logo, like where you were going with it, like that idea of having that in there, there's going to be a cool little sub-menu of all the things you can do. Like right there, there'll be blog, producer program, we're going to shove all that stuff there on the right side. And you know what, and part of it, from a design standpoint, I almost feel like, what do you think, Ari? It would be cool if like all the interactive stuff, here's what I mean. So I don't think the host is as important as um, like the templates, for example, the resources. And we were talking to CrowdTuner to Robert Haydock, you know, we had that cool new app thing that gives you relative things to this. What I would do is I almost say that what if we had a, uh, a, a division here like with, another, like with a darker gray. So it's basically black, dark gray, then this light blue gray, and, and then screw this dude and put him down here and just have the resources. So you have that, and then you have all the resources available for this episode or for this you know what show. Yeah. No, I like that, I like that. You, you almost made me think of like a sub map down there where that bottom area changes. And then that, and then that's what I was going to, where the, the, the blog, that all other stuff, could be down here, right. uh, like you're saying. But this is obviously the description of the episode, which the question is, is it really needed there? As long as the video is always there. Let's leave the video there, but let's make a division down here, and then and then push everything except the resources right here. That's it. For now, let's just make that move, mm. and forget about the sub-nav. The sub-nav we'll figure out here. We haven't gotten to sub-nav. We'll get it in the next mm. sprint. But what I want to do is that all the related content is immediately there, and that eventually the other thing we want to do is have become a producer of this show, or whatever the subscription language is for my show and for the network as a whole, we might actually have to change what that means. Like, it, become a producer, join this show, support this show, mm -hmm. uh, download the templates. Do you want to download all these templates? Become a show supporter. Mm -hmm. If you want to, to download all these templates, support the show. For $5 a month, you get these. Like, the, sales is, the sale for it is right there on the right side. So again, and I'm thinking, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at all these things and thinking about all this stuff very explicitly from our client kit. I can't forget, this is my Bible from a what to do standpoint. I might have forgotten this stuff. Okay. Let me, uh, producers, uh, we're running short. We're going to be done in a second. So how far are we into the sprint? Um, as far as the show page, those, these are stories. That I'm seeing. Can you can I access your your? Can yeah, you just go to one nine two dot one six eight dot. Wait, 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 wait for it. One nine two dot one six eight. One nine two dot one six eight. Yep. Dot one dot twenty four. Dot one dot twenty four. And excellent. Excellent. So basically, this is on the. Do I have to log in? So for those of you who are watching. What I am doing is I am oh, I am logging in. Yeah, to, for those of you who are watching, I'm looking at his IP at the server he set up. And again, a server is just a yeah. discrete IP address. This is just yeah, looking at the server on my own computer. No, that's fine. But it has a username. It has a little Drupal guy. Little what does a Drupal guy mean? Uh, he's just a little. He's a little drop of water. Yeah. Duh, right. So what, do you have a login? Uh, 
You don't need a login, let me just actually change the front page real quick. No front page content has been created, powered by Drupal. I need to do the history of Drupal on the show. Like, how did this all come about? Why was it created? It's been around for a while. Like, a lot of the sites that you love and visit, one of my favorite sites, Inc. Magazine, um, for the entrepreneur is all in Drupal. Um, I think Fast Company's in Drupal. All right. So check out Fast Company. I'm gonna skip this ad. Darwin's approach to business. You know, Fast Company is a Drupal site, and, and I'm gonna voice something that, you know, these sites are for content. You know, it's for content-rich site. Uh, for for, uh, you know, I have a friend at Wedding Kennedy that uh, we used to talk a lot about kind of why our sites square and format. Actually, he's not Wedding Kennedy anymore, but. Um, you know, a few a few years ago, I looked at their site again at White and Kennedy, and and it looks super cool. I mean, you guys are looking at it here on my screen. I love the White and Kennedy site uh, in terms of the textures and what it uses and what it does is very innovative. But it's still very modular. It's like you, if they just do it in a very unique, I wouldn't be surprised. How can you tell the site's Drupal looking under the hood? Like, um, can I actually look at the source? You look at the source. How how what are telltale signs? Like, um, if I do a command F, what should I find? Using some uh, module, like you'll notice in the word module sheet, you'll see slash module slash system. Um, slash module, let me see. Rat space. Uh, rat space. Um, yeah, nice. You'll see uh, the yeah, jQuery things. files starting in the. Yeah, they haven't been updated in the. Uh, yeah, in there's the a lot of jQuery files. Yes. Well, jQuery is used on a lot, but uh, in Drupal it's stored in the miscellaneous folder, so you'll see it slash miscellaneous slash jQuery. Got it. Um, yeah, it is. Yeah. So, so, so even, I think, I'm going to guess that what a Kennedy is. All right, so it, it, are we updated? Yeah, so if you go to refresh the page, you'll see. Yeah, okay, so let me confirm the IP. So it's 192. Well, there we go. This week in web design. So ladies and gentlemen, there you see it. It's the first, uh, all right, look at that, even a working video. Yeah. Um, Tony Wong returns to, it's now, it doesn't have a template completed in it. Right. Uh, uh, so, um, apply. We're going to have to do that in the next show. So 20, uh, uh, most of the first sprints always fail in terms of velocity. So we didn't necessarily make it to a skin uh, site. But we did make the sprint goal and that it's functional. If we had to launch this, well, we wouldn't necessarily want to launch it, and you don't miss. You know, we, we most 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 first sprints we don't launch. We usually start trying to launch in the second sprints, and by launching, meaning internally. That's what we said earlier. I mean, it's adaptable. Yeah. And then we put everything that we didn't finish into the next sprint. Yeah. Now, question is, can we finish the site in the six episodes? And that's what's going to happen. So, but it's not a live site, right? Is what we said. No, it's not going to be live site. It's going to be with uh, with Jason and with the team at this weekend, and to and to begin beta testing with our with our users and adding content and like banging yeah. on it. And while we're doing that, then we'll start doing figuring out the other sections and the rest of the site. It's going to take a while to populate the content and to migrate it over. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. We have done a behind the scenes view today at the team, Ari, uh, myself, uh, Tony Wong, who left us halfway through, but. They didn't really have to be here since he's an amazing Scrum Master. And Jacob Patassi from uh, Stop First New Media working on a Drupal site. You saw it uh, here, you saw what we were able to do in one day. And hopefully you'll be able to try all this stuff out at home for those of you who are building Drupal sites. And we'll see you next week when we're going to continue these sprints um, and hopefully have faster velocity and get a skinned and designed version of the site up, uh, for, or of that page for the next episode. So stick around and watch us next week.